Joining me now is Senator Angus King of Maine, who serves on the Intelligence and Armed Services Committee. Senator, very good to see you. Uh, thanks Thank for being you, with Andrea. us. Thank you, Welcome home. Thank you. I wanted to ask you about the rail agreement that passed the House. Do you think it will pass the Senate today? What about that paid uh, I, sick leave proposal? I think it will. I think Garrett did a great job of sort of summarizing the, the state of play. I think it's going to pass. There's indications on both sides of the aisle. Everybody realizes this is something we just can't let happen. The effects on the economy, as you mentioned, would be catastrophic in the billions of dollars a day on top of the inflation that we're already dealing with. So uh, we've got to get this done. The, the question is how to handle the amendments, how much time it will take, what the debate is going to look like, and whether to uh, impose the, uh, the uh, sick leave provision that the, the House uh, also included. A uh, lot of discussion going on all over the place today, uh, but uh, I'll be surprised. Now, <laughs> you can go broke betting on Congress when they're going to get something done, but uh, I believe we're going to get it done today. And, you know, everything is also, you know, personal in terms of diplomacy with this president in particular. Relationships are important. There's a lot of symbolism involved in a state visit. There's also a lot of business being done. How significant is it that President Biden invited Emmanuel Macron to the White House for the first dinner? And their meeting is going on longer than expected. We're still waiting for their joint press conference. Well, I consider the meeting going on longer than expected a good sign. Uh, right. That means they're having substantive discussions. Uh, this is a big deal. It's the big deal. Uh, it's a big deal for President Macron. Big deal for France that they are the first, uh, the first country to be invited for this kind of visit uh, at the White House, uh, and it, it really, I think, elevates the status of France. The important, the importance, really, as you know, Andrea, is uh, this extraordinary effort that the president has made and that the world has made to, to unify in the face of, of the uh, Putin's aggression in Ukraine. Uh, NATO has never been stronger. Uh, and uh, this, I think this meeting is an important part of sort of uh, reiterating the importance of that unity. And, and that's why uh, I'm glad that President France is here. Uh, I also parenthetically have to say I'm glad that they're serving Maine lobster at dinner tonight. Yeah, uh, apparently a lot of late Maine lobster. Um, I think we even had a picture of the, sh the White House chef holding up the Maine lobster. How many pounds of Maine lobster for this special dinner tonight? Well, I, I heard there, there, there are 200 lobsters uh, that are uh, in, in the in the going to be in the dinner. So it's probably a couple of hundred pounds, three or four hundred pounds of of, uh, of uh, the, one of the most delicious foods on earth. And uh, I, I think it's it's great that the, the White House chose, the president chose this uh, main iconic delicacy uh, for the first major state dinner. It's all mouth-watering for those of us, you know, on the outside <laughs> looking in. Um, at a press conference yesterday, a group of Senate Republicans warned that they were going to drag out the National Defense Authorization Act unless they get a vote on ending a COVID vaccination mandate for service members. Let's listen to what some of your Republican colleagues had to say. We need more people in the military, not less. And uh, this mandate is going to result in thousands, tens of thousands, of uh, able-bodied Americans who are well-trained leaving the military because they chose not to get vaccinated. One of the reasons I believe that President Biden and Vice President Harris are pushing through this policy is that I believe they're doing this as an effort to purge from the military conservatives. Purge from the military people who don't agree with their political agenda. As an Armed Services me Committee member, I, take it away. <laughs> Give me a break. We're trying to keep people healthy. Members of the military have to have a whole battery of vaccinations when they when they sign up, when they enlist. They go on year by year, uh, small, smallpox, diphtheria, you name it. I mean, there, there's nothing new or unusual about a, a, a vaccination requirement. It's also COVID is a, is a disease that's serious. And by the way, Andrea, George Washington required the troops in the Continental Army to be vaccinated against smallpox. I mean, this is just rational health policy in an in a environment where a, a pandemic, uh, which is contagious, uh, could be devastating. So, uh, you know, uh, there's a process if people have a legitimate medical excuse or a religious, some kind of religious excuse, which, uh, frankly, I don't fully understand what that would be. But uh, there is a process where if people have some kind of medical 
problem that this would be a problem, they, they can avail themselves of, of an exemption. So uh, th this is uh, this is overblown. I mean, I, I'm waiting for the press conference about the smallpox and the diphtheria and the measles vaccination. Uh, give me a break. Yeah, and, uh, you know, it, it, they do live in close quarters in the military. And I do remember on one of our carriers early in COVID, there was such a, a spread on that carrier that it was taken out of action. It had to stay in port in Asia, I believe. I, I, remember, I remember that incident. I was on a conference call with the Armed Services Committee during that exact uh, uh, situation, and it was devastating. That that ship had to be quarantined. The, the people couldn't leave. Uh, there were cases just spread like wildfire. So if ever there was a situation where vaccination for a, 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 an infectious disease is called for, it would be in a, in a situation where you have people living in, in close quarters. Plus, these are people who we need to be well in order to defend our country. Uh, so again, uh, there's a there's an exit if people have a legitimate uh, 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 excuse or mil uh, medical excuse. But uh, this is just uh, to, to me, it's common sense. And, it, and it's consistent with with the practice of the military since time immemorial, which is to protect our troops from infectious disease. Well, on a more delicious note, we just want to say <laughs> it's great about the, the main lobster. And uh, I know they're going to have a wonderful dinner tonight. And that is, you see, the White House chefs are all in on that as the first well, lady the old, was showing the, the off only, the, the plan. The, the only oversight is that the, the senator from Maine wasn't invited to the dinner tonight. But uh, How I'll, is have that possible, uh, I'll, have, I'll have my lobster at home. It's not a problem. I'm not worried. <laughs> yeah, my invitation was missing in the mail, but yours is far more important. <laughs>